Season of Dawn has brought a bunch of new guns to the table. Some of them not so good, but others definitely worth taking a look at. Hi there, my name is Fallout, but I've also been known to answer to FP, Papa Fallout, or That Shotgun Guy. Anywho, thanks for being here, and today we are taking a look at this weapon. Now, this beautiful piece of shiny chrome-like perfection is the Gallant Charge, a brand new fusion rifle that has just been introduced to the D2 sandbox. And oh yeah, I know how some of you feel about fusion rifles. But a lot of you have got to be cool with them. I mean, otherwise, why would you be here? Why did you click on this video unless you just enjoy the sound of my voice, in which case I apologize. But look, let's be objective here. Fusion rifles, especially on console, are very strong options for PvP. So if you're here because you like to voop people, well, this video is for you. And if you hate fusion rifles, at least think about this video like studying up on the mind of the enemy. Figure out what makes them hated weapon types work. Now let's get one thing out of the way right now. The Gallant Charge, while beautiful, has some stiff competition. I have to address this, otherwise the comment section is going to be jam-packed with messages like, LOL, I'll just stick to my Arantil, bro. I will not lie to you, my friends. The Arantil is the 800-pound gorilla in the fusion rifle room. It brings hard competition to the table. Check it out. If you put both the Arantil and the Gallon Charge together, head-to-head, -to -head, they're very close, but the Arantil barely wins in two fairly important categories. The Arantil Arantil has a base 59 range compared to the Gallant's 53, and the Arantil has a base 65 aim assist compared to the Gallant's 61. Now, that's hard to ignore, but the Gallant has good numbers going for it too. The Gallant has more stability and more handling than the Arantil. Technically only by one point, so don't do a backflip just yet, but here's the real number that the Gallant has going on, recoil direction. I know, not very sexy, but it's really important and I'm gonna take tell you why. The Arantil, by comparison, has a 60 recoil direction, and the Gallant has a 76. If you're out there and you watched my Does the Counterbalance Mod Do Anything Recoil Direction Explained video, it's time to put your knowledge to work, you beautiful nerds. If you've never seen it, well A, how dare you, and B, I highly recommend you watch it so this next section makes a bit more sense, but the gist of it is. With the Gallant Charge's very high recoil direction number, the Gallant has the potential to be more stable with less annoying recoil direction than the Arantil. The Gallant actually has the potential to very easily reach the fabled recoil direction 100 number, something that the Arantil physically is unable to achieve. Is all this going over your pretty head a little bit? The bottom line is that for the reason I just mentioned, and one more I haven't brought up yet, the Gallant is probably going to be the fusion rifle for people who play with controller. Mouse and keyboard players don't care about recoil direction as much as controller players. They do care, but controller players care much more. The Arantil has some perks available that the Gallant does not have. Good perks, too. But the Gallant brings the ability to have super not annoying recoil direction to the table, and thus may be the new hotness for folks out there playing controller. Good? Alright, let's get into it then and determine the Gallant Charge PvP God Roll. We're starting off in Column 1, as is tradition, looking at every barrel option available. Notice anything? The Gallant Charge doesn't have scope options available the way other fusion rifles like the Arantil do. Meaning, whereas Arantil users in Column 1 can only pick options that affect range, handling, and zoom, Gallant Charge users get access to these options, which can affect range, handling, recoil direction, and stability. Remember one minute ago when I said there was another reason why the Gallant is going to be loved by controller players? Well, here is that other reason. Controller players really appreciate stability, and the Gallant has access to barrel mods that can affect the weapon's stability. Take note, M&K players, this gun will still be hot. It's again essentially an Arantil clone, but you don't value stability as much as the controller folk do. On that note, if you're looking at column one as an MK player. I'm strongly suggesting you straight up go for hammer forged rifling or maybe even full bore. Yeah, the minus 15 to handling may hurt a little bit, but with a little practice, you'll get used to it. MK players want range. That's the bottom line. For you controller folk out there, though, get ready. This is going to be a weird one, but stay with me. The winners, I feel, are either extended barrel or chambered compensator. Here's the reason why recoil direction plus 
10. Did you watch that counterbalance video I mentioned yet, you lazy bastard? All right, look at this chart. Again, I explain it more fully in the other video, but your weapon's recoil direction number directly affects which way the gun is going to kick when you shoot it. The Gallant has a base of 76, which is pretty good. It may kick ever so slightly to the right on occasion, but with the extra 10 recoil direction given by either extended barrel or chambered compensator, plus a counterbalance mod which gives an extra 15, you reach 100 recoil direction. Again, something that the Arantil cannot do. Now, technically, you could go for Arrowhead Break, which gives you 30 overall recoil direction extra, and that would do the job nicely, but I like that the extended barrel gives you 10 extra range, and Chambered Compensator gives you 10 extra stability. If you put a gun to my head, I'm probably going to say for controller users, Chambered Compensator might be the winner. But again, Extended Barrel and even Arrowhead Break are going to be fine choices. Bag the rest. Ooh, numbers, baby. Isn't it empowering? Let's ride that high and go over to column two, where we get to pick between the usual suspects. Enhanced battery, liquid coils, particle repeater, projection fuse, accelerated coils, and ionized battery. It should go without saying that for a PvP god roll, enhanced battery and ionized battery should go into the trash can right away. Big who cares to magazine size. Now we get into the never-ending debate between liquid coils and accelerated coils. The two questions I always get are, is the extra damage you get from liquid coils worth the extra charge time, and is the faster charge time offered by accelerated coils worth the overall drop in damage? Do me a favor, take a look at this chart. It all depends on two things, how much resilience your enemy is running and how many fusion rifle bolts you land on the enemy that you're shooting. For example, let's say you've got accelerated coils. You fire at a titan with high resilience. If you hit that titan with five bolts, he's gonna die no matter what, but if you get a bad spread and only hit him with four, he's going to live and also be very angry at you. I find that for the most part, I actually really like accelerated coils, especially for close range engagements. I also happen to think that liquid coils is a huge waste on this archetype, considering most of the time I land almost all my bolts on the enemy anyway, and the extra charge time puts me at a big disadvantage. If you're an up close and personal type player, I vote accelerated coils all the way, but if you find yourself missing bolts here and there and enemies getting away alive with barely any health, you can hopefully switch to one of these two other options. Projection Fuse if you play on mouse and keyboard, and either Projection Fuse or Particle Repeater if you play on controller. Probably leaning a little bit more towards Particle Repeater for the controller folk. As always, this is just a guideline, use whatever feels best. Moving on to column three, a surprising lack of options here. God damn, but we'll make do with what we got. Hip fire grip is a perk I just do not like for fusion rifles. I mean, look, sometimes you shoot shotguns from the hip if the enemy is right up in your grill and you don't need to ADS, but fusion rifles have a charge time. You almost always have time to ADS while charging. Bottom line, I don't like this perk. Don't at me, I'm throwing it away. Grave robber is also eh, on this weapon. It's very rare that you find guns that I actually like Grave Robber for, and this ain't one. I like this perk better when paired with Backup Plan, which unfortunately is a perk that the Gallant Charge does not have. So for now, I think I'm going to put it on the back burner and move on to the last two perks, Demolitionist and No Distractions. Let's start with Demolitionist. This is really straightforward, and honestly, not that bad. Kills give grenade energy, and activating your grenade ability reloads the weapon from reserves. If you're running a build that is grenade focused, or grenade heavy, or whatever, this is what you want to roll. You know, like a Nova Warp Warlock running handheld supernova. Don't get me wrong, running this gun with that perk will get you a one-way ticket to hell, but at least you'll have fun using this loadout on the way there. Now we come to no distractions, aiming this weapon for a short period of time reduces flinch. On paper, God damn, that sounds like a no-brainer. Less flinch while aiming a fusion rifle? Sign me up, buddy. But the only potential problem is the activation time. From the second you begin aiming a weapon with no distractions to the point where the perk actually kicks in, it's almost a full two seconds. It's about one and a half-ish. Now that sounds short, but in reality, it's much longer than you might think, especially in a PvP gunfight. Another major potential problem with that is if you wanted to run acceleration accelerated coils in column two. I've done a side-by-side -side comparison, and accelerated coils pops 
off way faster than no distractions can activate. It just doesn't make a ton of sense on paper to mix those two perks together. I'm gonna say if you want a fast fusion rifle to use with aggressive gameplay, go accelerated coils and pair that with either demolitionist or maybe even auto-loading holster, I guess. If you are interested in a no distractions fusion rifle, and I am, probably pair it with something other than accelerated coils. Moving on to column four, some interesting options on the table here, including a relatively new one, lead from gold. Picking up heavy ammo also grants ammo to this weapon. I gotta say, Kind of a bummer from a PvP standpoint, Lead from Gold is definitely more of a PvE perk. Which is fine, every perk can't be awesome for Crucible. In a similar vein, we can actually also group together all the damage buff perks, including Swashbuckler, Multi-Kill Clip, and Rampage. All around, great options for PvE, but in Crucible, you can already outright smoke an enemy in one shot without these perks in effect on your fusion rifle, so why bother? Don't get me wrong, there are situational uses where each of those perks can come in handy. I'm gonna tell you right now, it would be really satisfying to melee some chump to death, activate Swashbuckler, then turn around and absolutely liquefy some smarmy hunter charging towards you in Spectral Blade. But really, with a good PvP fusion rifle, we want perks that are not necessarily going to be awesome once in a blue moon. We want perks that are going to come into effect all the time and are going to help you land kills for the majority of the game. Enter the two remaining perks, Tap the Trigger and Rangefinder. Rangefinder is pretty straightforward. This perk's been in the game for Forever, and it's actually really hard to find a weapon that isn't grateful for having rangefinder on it. It's not the sexiest perk in the world, it's more like a cast iron skillet, tried and true. Basic but reliable. While it doesn't give you a ton of extra range, every little bit does help. Then there's Tap the Trigger, which according to the description grants a short period of increased stability and accuracy on the initial trigger pull. I gotta be honest, the effects of this perk are really, really hard to see on something like a fusion rifle, but I'm a time-wasting degenerate weapon hoarder slash PvP addict with nothing better to do, so come along with me to the testing grounds. So here, we are trying to get a visual representation Presentation of how exactly tap the trigger helps your fusion rifle. The reason this is so hard is because fusion rifles, like shotguns, are just riddled with RNG. Meaning every time you pull the trigger, your fusion rifle bolt spray is going to be kind of random and a little different. So if you get a really good bolt spread, what do you chalk it up to? Here, for example, a side-by-side -side comparison. These are two Epicurean fusion rifles with identical stats, one with tap the trigger and one without. When they both fire, take a look at the bolt spread. The tap the trigger one, definitely a more stable and overall more accurate spread. But again, fusion rifles by nature are kinda random. So was that accuracy due to tap the trigger, or did I just get a lucky spread? I could show you additional footage where I kept shooting the weapon, and some of the bolt spreads, even with tap the trigger, were fairly wonky. But there is good news. See, tap the trigger, as you might know, rolls on other weapons too. So check this out, I've got two hammerhead machine guns here with near identical stats. They got the same stability, one just has a smidge more range. Same test, side by side. Unlike fusion rifles, machine guns aren't that random. I think it's really clear to see the effects of tap the trigger here. The basic hammerhead is pretty wild and all over the place. Oh, and I should make it clear that in both tests, obviously, I'm not attempting to control the weapon at all. Again, the hammerhead with Without tap the trigger is way more stable overall, more focused and less wild, like me when I graduated college. So in a nutshell, that's what tap the trigger can do for fusions. Yes, fusions are random by nature, and sometimes you could just get a bad spread, but I believe that tap the trigger is designed to give you more consistently accurate shots. And consistency is what we like to go for around here, making Tap the Trigger my personal winner of column four. For the masterwork category, what are we looking for? Well, if you're asking me, I'm going with either range or stability. If you're playing on mouse and keyboard, probably range. If controller, you could actually kinda go either way. If you really wanna try and map people, you probably want range. But if you get stability, definitely be happy with that. Actually, I think I'm gonna make my answer stability based on the fact that if you want a fusion rifle to go completely all out in the range department, 
go for the Arantil. The Gallant, as I said early on in this video, is the more stable, slightly less wild Arantil. So F it, why not just go max stability and be a complete unflinchable, unwavering nuisance at close to mid-range. On the subject of weapon mods, I'm gonna circle back to what I said earlier. If you picked either Extended Barrel or Chambered Compensator in column one, go for a counterbalance mod and get that 100 recoil direction. Or if you think you're fine with the recoil the way it is, can't go wrong with a good old fashioned targeting adjuster mod. Anyway, let's review what is our PVP god roll. Kinda hard to tell, if I'm being honest, because column three is sort of a mess and I'm all over the place right now. I'm gonna put two god rolls out there. The first one I'm calling the Grenade Farmer. Full bore if you're on MK, extended barrel or chambered compensator if you're on controller, Accelerated Coils for Column 2, Demolitionist for Column 3, Tap the Trigger for Column 4, Range Masterwork for M&K players, or Range or Stability Masterwork for the Controller Crew. Paired together with a Counterbalance mod for the Controller Folk, or a Targeting Adjuster mod for the M&K players. And God Roll number 2, which is kinda what I'm more interested in, is the exact same everything as God Roll number 1, because I'm not repeating all that, except replace Accelerated Coils in Column 2 with Particle Repeater if you're on controller, projection fuse for M and K, and replace demolitionist in column three with no distractions. I know the perk takes like a hot minute to activate, but I really can't help myself. I want a fusion rifle with less incoming flinch. It seems fun and viable. Yeah, you'll probably have to do a little bit of hard scoping every now and then, but not the end of the world. If you're thinking to yourself, well, that sounds kind of weird. I think no distractions might be fast enough of a perk for me. I get that. Either go with god roll number one, or maybe better yet, just get yourself an Arantil. Anyway, happy farming for this weapon. Wish you lots of luck for whatever roll you might be looking for, and let me know either down in the comment section or on Twitter which rolls you wound up with for this weapon that you really like. I've got a bunch of other god roll videos in this series, but there's still a ton of weapons out there I haven't touched on yet. If you want me to review a specific weapon, please let me know down in the comment section along with a hashtag godroll comment. Don't forget to click subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.